Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you would never ask, Heidi. It is the weekend, so let's do the whole doggone thing. Saturday, the 1st of July, National Play Outside Day. When I was a kid, that was every day. Uh, National Day of Cooperatives, International Reggae Day, it's Canada Day today, National Hop a Park Day, National Ginger Snap Day, National Creative Ice Cream Flavors Day. Do you have any favorite creative flavors for ice cream? Bubblegum. It's my favorite. She's a bubblegum fan. I am. National U.S. Postage Stamp Day. And National Postal Worker Day. All of those things happening on Saturday, the 1st of July. Sunday, the 2nd of July, National Wildland Firefighter Day. National Anesthesis Day. I don't know how to say that. (laughs) And World UFO Day. Oh, my goodness. I wish I would have known ahead of time. I've got some fun people I could have had for my interview today. But instead, we have another fun person, Brian Boone. Uh, We know him from Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. But the reason we're chatting with him this particular weekend is because of this book right here. Oh, I'm holding it up, but you don't see it. It's called Strange USA, uh, Historical Oddities, Roadside Rarities, Unique Eats, and Amazing Americans. I saw this. this, And I've been reading this. This is really fun. This is my kind of stuff. I'm excited to chat with Brian coming up. Give yourself a little credit. It's more important than ever to have a better credit card. At BetterCreditCards.com, we offer a variety of credit card options to fit your needs. Whether you want a card to give you cash back or a credit card to help you build your credit, we probably have it at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Give yourself a little credit. Go ahead and switch to BetterCreditCards.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. In a survey, 82% of people said that ice cream is their number one favorite dessert. Now, this weekend is National Creative Ice Cream Flavors Day. We talked about that. Here are the top five best flavors, according to expert rankings. Number five, cookie dough. This could have been the list today, couldn't it? Holy cow. Uh, Number four, mint chocolate chip. I love that stuff, by the way. Uh, Number three, cookies and cream. I love that stuff, by the way. Oh, uh, number five was cookie dough. I love that stuff, by the way. (laughs) Number two, vanilla. I love that stuff, by the way. And the number one answer for the best ice cream ever, what do you think it is, Heidi? Chocolate? Yeah, yeah, chocolate. I love that stuff, by the way. (laughs) I don't know if you caught a theme here, but I love all ice cream. Every (laughs) single bit of it. So uh, that could be why I weigh what I weigh, but I'm a big fan, big, 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 big fan, (laughs) big fan. Surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Did you know you can allocate a percentage of your IRA to physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover? You can put your IRA back on the gold standard. Genesis Gold IRA is the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. GenesisGoldIRA.com would like to help protect your IRA today with a simple phone call. Learn more and get the phone number at Genesis goldira.com that's genesisgoldira.com did you know brought to you by genesisgoldira.com Heidi did you know that cursive is making a comeback yeah back in 2006 it was an optional piece of learning in Ontario elementary schools cursive writing is now set to return as a mandatory part of curriculum Good. There. I thought it was ridiculous yeah. we're getting rid of it to begin with education minister Stephen Leish said teaching kids to write again is about more than having them learn to sign their own names. He feels learning cursive is critical to helping young people to express more substantively. And if we want to boost reading instruction, we have to embrace some of those time-tested strategies that have worked for generations. Mm -hmm. The thing that's interesting is they don't teach, they haven't for a bit now, they haven't taught cursive. 2006 is when that particular school, but other schools, different times, and I actually saw somebody's signature, and they're like the same age as our daughter in her 20s, and th- it wasn't a cursive signature. Right. It was like they just barely scratched right. out their name. I'm like, what? It, what is that? It's my signature. I'm like, that's your signature? What? Yeah, I agree. I think it like, needs you, to be. You sure yeah. you're even right-handed? Because I think you did that <laughs> wrong. So, yeah, it probably should be. So, I'm glad that it's coming back. We don't know everything, but now we know this. Now, big screen, a little screen, brought to you by insurancechicken.com. Kevin Costner is battling his estranged wife, Christine Baumgartner, over an alleged refusal to leave his $145 million residence. 
So that is... Uh, I had heard about that. I think that is so sad. There's more details on that story if you want to read the nitty gritty, but I'm going to skip down to the second story that I have. Kevin Costner's estranged wife has requested nearly a quarter of a million dollars monthly in child support. $248,000 a month to raise the kids. Yikes. That seems a bit much. <laughs> well. <laughs> so there's three children age uh, 13 to 16 Costner previously agreed to pay $38,000 a month. I bet there are many people listening who get child support who don't get that much in a year. Oh, I know. So I know, So they're like, uh, sure. $38,000 a month is not enough. You need $248,000 yeah. a month? Yeah. And now moving on to the third story, Paramount Plus's Yellowstone prequel 1923 is the latest show to shut down production as the Writers Guild of America strike. It's the 50th day. I didn't know that was still going. And maybe it's done by now, but when this was written... Uh, it was it was still gone. I don't know. How do I know when they're done? You see people writing again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Somebody let me it know. It hasn't affected me at all. Me I can neither. be you know, screen, completely honest. Little screen brought to you by insurancechicken.com. How much do you pay for your cell phone every month? If that's more than 15 bucks, it's time for a Mintervention. Mint Mobile makes it affordable and easy to switch. Get a new phone or bring a current one. Whether you're a fan of iPhones or Samsung, they both work well with Mint Mobile. At Mintervention.com, you can see the current special offers from Mint Mobile, offering premium wireless for just $15 a month. That's far less than most people are paying. Just $15 a month. Learn more now at Mintervention.com. Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. The U.S. Coast Guard found found over 14,000 pounds of cocaine worth $186 million. It was dumped at sea near Miami. If that is yours, just reach out to them. They would love to get it back to you. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, let them know. <laughs> just, send, just describe it. Let them know. $186 million worth of cocaine just floating in the ocean. So <laughs> I don't... You'd think somebody would have noticed that was missing. You would think. I'm not sure what was going on there. But uh, again, that all that stuff baffles me. This story was going to be part of my big screen, little screen. But I was like, I don't know why it was going to be there because it has nothing to do with that. But that's where it was officially in the like entertainment category. But I think it belongs right here in the scoop of the day. Uh, a Bible that was once gifted to Elvis Presley is up for sale through a memorabilia company called Moments in Time. How much do you suppose they're trying to sell this Bible oh, for? Oh, jeez. Just shoot a number out. 170000 No. It's a bargain at just 95000 Oh. Heidi's going to scratch up the dough and buy this now. <laughs> I don't think so. I bet our son would love to have this. The Bible was given to Elvis Presley by a fan. It even has his name etched onto the cover, but... Much more important is the fact that Elvis signed it on the inside cover, making it very collectible. It also contains a photograph of Elvis and his mother, Gladys. So it's really a cool thing. And for the right person, Elvis Presley fans, you know, yeah. the collectors of that, Bible collectors, our son yeah. is a collector of Bibles, which, again, if you would have told me that five years ago, I would have would laughed never in you. your face. Yeah. But now our son has, how many Bibles do you think he has? Oh, I couldn't even begin to guess. Bunches. So many. Yeah, he and then he's like, hey, you know what I got? Check this out. And he's showing me the Bible. I'm like, how many, <laughs> how many more of those do you need? You know, they're all the same on the inside, right? It's, a, mm. it's pretty close. And I got I got an earful when I told him they're all the same. He's <laughs> like, oh, they're no. they're not. No, let me show you this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> again, if you're going to have a hobby, that's a good one to have. Uh, again, if you're interested in this Bible, $95,000. It's through a company called Moments in Time. So, I don't know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Why did the chicken cross the road? To save money on insurance at insurancechicken.com. Do you have the best plan for you? Find out at insurancechicken.com. Let's face it. We don't even want insurance. We need it. But you don't need to overpay. Head over to insurancechicken.com to see your rates from several different companies. All available in one place at insurancechicken.com. The other guys have a gecko, a duck, and an emu. Why not a chicken? Insurance chicken.com that's insurancechicken.com thank you for listening to the john and heidi show excited to visit right now with brian boone about an awesome new book called strange usa and brian you guys picked the perfect time for this to come out just in time for the fourth of july and independence day there's a lot of interesting things that i looked at in this book that i go really that's that's what happened so there's a lot of interesting stuff tell me how long how long does it take to put a book like this together these take about a year to put together we we have so much material we've got this huge research library and we, we just compile stuff and, and then we decide uh, you know what goes good together and we throw together and we realize that we had 
thousands of just kind of interesting facts about why the USA is this strange, complex, you know, historically marvelous place. And it made us feel kind of patriotic. Like, you know, no matter what your politics are, you can kind of agree that the U.S. is as uh, complex uh, as it is interesting. And so we, we just thought, hey, you know, why not the 4th of July? Uh, people are making road trips. They're celebrating America. This is a this is a, a roadmap for for trivia and for keeping yourself entertained on those uh, long car rides. And I would say I am a big fan of history, and I I probably know more than the average person because it's something I'm interested in. But there are some things that I even discovered while flipping through this book, which I love that. Oh, fantastic! So do love you to hear that? Do you have kind of a favorite thing when you were putting this book together? Is your kind of a chapter? Or, well, I don't know if you call it a chapter. It's kind of pages. But is there a, a section that that you would say this was my favorite thing to add to Strange USA? You know, uh, I was I was uh, I was just flipping through this the other day, and I, I remembered that the bit about Uncle Sam, the origins of Uncle Sam. Oh yeah, uh, much later than 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 I always thought. I I kind of thought it was like a the image of this red, white, and blue guy in a top hat, you know, pointing his finger out. Was a was a revolutionary war era thing, recruiting yeah. people for the cause against the uh, the nefarious British, right? But the imagery actually dates to the late nineteenth century, kind of a, an amalgamation of different editorial cartoonists, some British making fun of America, yeah. some um, Americans like embracing that. But it, it all came from uh, the War of eighteen twelve, when a meat supplier named Uncle Sam shipped off meat to the troops, to the to the soldiers, and all of the boxes were stamped with U.S., and somebody asked, what does the U.S. stand for? And somebody said, oh, it's Uncle Sam. So Uncle Sam became kind of, you know, the personification of America, you know, in those, uh, in those years before, you know, the Statue of Liberty or something like that. I love that. And again, the thing that's really cool is it's based on a real person, and you know the 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 personification, like you said, of of America in this image that is red, white, and blue, and it's this guy pointing, "I want you." But it it all started somewhere, and you never think about that. But everything starts somewhere, doesn't it? Everything has to start somewhere, and it's it's generally not where you would think it was, and and things just evolve over time, and it's it's kind of fascinating how how rumors and information uh, and just kind of stories would spread, you know, long before we had the technology really to do so. And one of the things that's fascinating to me as we're approaching the 4th of July, the 4th of July, everybody would think is a very positive holiday for the United States, Declaration of Independence. But we've only got one president that was born on that day. We had three that died on that day. And two of them died on exactly the same day. And that's also very interesting. And you'll find that in Strange USA. That That is bizarre. And I had to check it so many times because it just seems like kind of made up, right? Yeah, it, well, no, you, you couldn't make it up because if you made it up, nobody would believe no. it, but it happened, so that's pretty cool. It's it's bizarre. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on the 4th of July on the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Former friends, both founding fathers, became rivals after the election of 1800, which historians say was the birth of negative campaigning. They said horrible things about each other. Yeah. They they reconcile after, after the War of 1812. John Adams, 92 years old, determined to live to see the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. He dies that day. His last words on his deathbed are, Thomas Jefferson lives, except he didn't know that earlier that day, Thomas Jefferson had already died yeah. down in Virginia. So two presidents died the same day. And then the, the president born on the 4th of July, yeah. uh, Calvin Coolidge. So many fun things to learn. If you're interested in the book, it's available now. Strange USA is the name of the book. And again, our guest today, Brian Boone. Brian, thanks for your time. I appreciate it a bunch. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it was a pleasure to to put together, and it's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank Absolutely. You. Again, Brian Boone, and he's with Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. But the book that's out right now, just in time for Independence Day, Strange USA, Historical Oddities, Roadside Rarities, Unique Eats, and Amazing Americans. I've got a link to find it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Give yourself a little credit. It's more important than ever to have a better credit card. At bettercreditcards.com, we offer a variety of credit card options to fit your needs. Whether you want a card to give you cash back or a credit card to help you build your credit, we probably have it at bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. Give yourself a little credit. Go ahead and switch to bettercreditcards.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Referees get Super Bowl rings, too. So if you're a referee in the oh, Super Bowl, that's cool. you get a ring. 
So that's kind of cool. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? You can buy eel flavored ice cream in Japan. Ew. Yeah, I've been holding that. You know why? why? Because this weekend, once again, National Creative Ice Cream Flavors Day. I would say eel flavor definitely. Yeah. Falls Holy in that. cow! Yuck. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Jellyfish are not fish. They have no brains, no bones, and no hearts. So, hey, I used to date a girl like that. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're all wondering, was it me? All right. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that? Most I mean both of them? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Most heart attacks happen on a Monday. That's kind of crazy. And our final fun fact for you, what Heidi. What is that, John? People prefer blue toothbrushes over red toothbrushes. <laughs> Why? I don't, I don't know. That. Several fun facts. Now you know. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Did you know you can allocate a percentage of your IRA to physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover? You can put your IRA back on the gold standard. Genesis Gold IRA is the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. GenesisGoldIRA.com would like to help protect your IRA today with a simple phone call. Learn more and get the phone number at GenesisGoldIRA.com. That's GenesisGoldIRA.com. Time now for the Mint Mobile question of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of Mintervention.com. Question, Heidi. A little more than half of all men will post a selfie this summer of them doing this. What is it? I don't think I've ever done a selfie of this. I do this, but I don't think I've ever done a selfie of it. Um, I, I don't know, putting suntan lotion on their girlfriends. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's very specific. <laughs> Their girlfriends, what? No, I, I'm glad you stopped where you did. No, barbecuing is the answer. Yeah, a little uh, more than half of all men will post a selfie of themselves barbecuing this summer. I'm still not going to do it. Mint Mobile, <laughs> where do you want the suntan lotion, though? <laughs> Mint Mobile question of the day comes your way, courtesy of Mintervention.com. How much do you pay for your cell phone every month? If that's more than 15 bucks, it's time for a Mintervention. Mint Mobile makes it affordable and easy to switch. Get a new phone or bring a current one. Whether you're a fan of iPhones or Samsung, they both work well with Mint Mobile. At Mintervention.com, you can see the current special offers from Mint Mobile, offering premium wireless for just $15 a month. That's far less than most people are paying. Just $15 a month. Learn more now at Mintervention.com. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Uh, the owner of an auto repair shop who paid a former employee with 91,500 oily pennies has been ordered to pay nearly 4 million more pennies. A judge ruled that Miles Walker, who owns AOK Walker's Automotive in Peachtree City, Georgia, owed $39,934 to nine workers for unpaid overtime and damages. Walker agreed to the payment to settle a lawsuit that accused him of uh, retaliating against former employee Andreas Flatten back in uh, 2021 after they complain, uh, filed a complaint saying Walker owed him a final $915 paycheck. The employer dumped that amount in oil-covered pennies in this gentleman's driveway. Wow. The mountain of copper came with a pay stub signed with an expletive. The Labor Department said further investigation found Walker's business also violated overtime laws for nine workers. So, Seems like yeah. a nice guy. Well, I'm just saying he probably got himself in that extra trouble by doing that because if if it hadn't come to their attention, it wouldn't have come to their attention. So there you go. That $900 check turned into a $40,000 yeah. check. Weird News brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the list brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Obsolete pre-1990 skills. Reddit users born before 1990. What trivial skills do you possess that nobody uses anymore? Here are some of the answers, by the way. Remembering phone numbers. <laughs> yeah. I actually remember some, but a lot of them I don't really remember. I don't because they're all just saved in my phone now. I used to. I can unknot a curly telephone wire and get all the curls facing the right way. Well, now we don't have curly telephone wires. The ability to make and count out change for a purchase. Yeah, that's a good one. My family gets mad at me for using MS Paint instead of using Photoshop like they do. Um, I still know how to use a VCR to record a television program in advance. That's cool. Heidi was really good at that. I, I was. I don't know if I could do it again now yeah. that it's been so I remember long. when we first got married, I remember we were getting ready to go out, and she's like, hang on, I put a new tape in. I'm like, got to do what? I got to put a tape in. 
Why? To to record whose line is it anyway? I'm like, <laughs> what? What are you doing? What kind of mumbo jumbo is this? Uh, and then the last one on here is writing in cursive. So that we just talked about the fact that it's coming back. Uh, there's many others in between. If you'd like to see the list, you can find it in the show notes for today at John and Heidi Show dot com. Why did the chicken cross the road to save money on insurance at insurancechicken.com? Do you have the best plan for you? Find out at insurancechicken.com. Let's face it. We don't even want insurance. We need it. But you don't need to overpay. Head over to insurancechicken.com to see your rates from several different companies. All available in one place at insurancechicken.com. The other guys have a gecko, a duck, and an emu. Why not a chicken? Insurancechicken.com. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for the quote of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. Dimitri Martin says, In America, one sure sign of success is the presence of an unnecessary waterfall in a person's yard. (laughs) (laughs) I'm working on mine right now. You're building one right now. And it's going to be really big, which means apparently (laughs) it's a sign of success. Oh, that's hilarious. Look at my unnecessary waterfall. (laughs) Uh, the only reason I'm doing it is because I think it's really oh. cool, and I'm doing it myself, and it's going to cost me like 80 bucks total. So so there, Dimitri Martin, <laughs> what do you know? Anyway, quote of the day comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. And I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of GenesisGoldIRA.com. Listen to this. I feel dizzy. Sydney Dad has hilarious reaction to $100 million lottery win. <laughs> a father in Sydney became a multimillionaire overnight after winning the entire $100 million jackpot himself. The unsuspecting winner did not answer the initial call. And when he did answer, he couldn't believe the news. The man was sitting at home watching TV with his wife, and his call came in. This is unbelievable. I've won $100 million. Am I dreaming? Am I a millionaire now? He said on the phone. He had a physical reaction as well. He said uh, he got dizzy. He says, can you say this one more time? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I can't speak. I feel dizzy. I've slapped myself twice. It feels feels right. (laughs) When asked how he planned to enjoy his newly minted multi-millions, uh, there was a bit of disagreement between he and his wife. <laughs> I bet. He said, I still plan to go to work the next day. His wife, by the way, <laughs> who was in the background, said, really? We're multi- multi-millionaires now. I don't think we need to, end quote. So I think that's really cool. I absolutely love that. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a video if you want to hear it from him, if you want to see all this. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. So I have a question for you, Heidi. I think I already know the answer. But if you won $100 million, would you still co-host this show with me? Yes, I would. Would you really? I would. I thought for sure you were going to say no. If I but won- I could afford the fines and Here's- I'd get a lot more risky, I think. <laughs> Here's what I thought her answer was going to be. No, if I won $10 in the lottery, I wouldn't. <laughs> that would have been a Heidi answer. No, I would just be off the hook. I yeah. would I would say what I want. I would do what I Ooh, want. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would let you stay on the show then. If you'd like to read the story, it's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us on the John and Heidi Show.